And I'm assuming that anybody who calls me and asks a lot of questions it wants to spend their money wisely and they may not have a lot to invest. Um, I've been there, so I understand that it's it's a very important decision. So. What should I buy when it comes to silver now that we've gone through the pandemic, or hopefully, yeah? It, if you're gonna hold on for a long time and you wanna sell them when silver's around $50 an ounce, it won't matter what it is. All right, Tim, well, we had two phone calls and a gentleman come in here just moments ago asking the same question I wanted to ask you when I came to your shop. What should I buy when it comes to silver now that we've gone through the pandemic, or hopefully, yeah? Well, uh, typically the most liquid coins are the ones that represent a country, a sovereign coin, okay? Like the American Eagle or the Maple Leaf. Uh, just because there's a wider audience for them and they're, they're liquid when you want to trade them in. Um, Keep in mind, though, the price of silver hasn't gone anywhere pretty much in the last six months. Um, you know, we've gone up to around 30 and come down to 25, and we're hovering above 26 now. If you plan to or if you need to sell something um, in the 26 or $30 range, you're probably going to get more for the sovereign coins than you would for a round which costs you less or a bar that costs you less per ounce. Um, on the other hand, if, it, if you're gonna hold on for a long time and you wanna sell them when silver's around $50 an ounce, it won't matter what it is. Ooh. You'll never recover a premium because everything's gonna be the price the same. Really? And if it goes to $100 an ounce, uh, again, it won't matter at all what it is. An ounce of silver is gonna be in high demand and um, you'll get the same price for anything. One of the questions that we had on the uh, phone call, one of the ladies was asking, should I get American Eagles? Should I get Maples? Or what about just bars and rounds? And you gave her the advice. I also chimed in saying that one of the big differences is a trust or a recognizability factor in the government minted silver bullion. Yeah. Um, you might have a, oh, I don't know, a, a, a happy birthday round that's colorized or something, and you bring it into a coin shop dealer like you, Tim, and you look at it and you're like, um, I'm not gonna be able to sell that too easily, right? Oh yeah, it's, um, <laughs> we don't get that from the wholesaler. That, right. that becomes scrap. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, happy birthday or Merry Christmas mm. or Merry Easter or <laughs> Happy Hanukkah, whatever it is, it's worth an ounce of silver but when the wholesaler takes that to the refinery, he gets probably spot. And so he buys them for less than spot. So when I sell it to the wholesaler, I sell it to him for a little more than I pay for it, right. which Just... means I'm probably gonna pay around $25 an ounce when it's 26 something. Okay. Okay, so yeah, any of the art rounds, it's what we call them. Um, they're gonna bring less money. Uh, they, and if, if, if you're selling them for less, let's say it goes to $50 an ounce, uh, I will still have to pay more than $50 an ounce to buy these from a wholesaler. Hopefully the, uh, the margin won't have gone up a lot. Um, but, you know, I'm paying for, you know, the mainstream bars like Sunshine, HM, mm -hmm. bars like that or rounds from them. So when you bring them back to sell to me, I'm gonna give you at least spot or a little over spot. Mm -hmm. But the non-mainstream stuff, we always have to pay less because we get less. Now, post pandemic, is it as wise for people to be stacking long-term American Silver Eagles, Canadian Maple Leafs, paying that higher premium? People are saying, I am not doing that as much. But then when I, mentioned the reliability or the recognizability, the trust factor in that, she was willing to buy those. She yeah. wanted those. Even though she wants to hold it for a long time. Yes. Yeah, and that is uh, that is the, the safe order. And, you know, she's gonna get a roll of each. That puts her her mind at ease. You know, she, she mm. calls me because she and her daughter trust me. Um, but now she's, she's on the same thing, you know, well, I want to buy something that everybody trusts. So that means a lot. And I think you're right. They want to extend that trust to the type of silver they're getting. However, I think things have changed. 
significantly things have changed over this last what two years yeah. case in point tell us about the bars you were discussing the cost per ounce on the bars well it used to be i mean i i can't tell you how little we used to pay for these bars it's shocking compared to today um the margins have gone up so dramatically but that's because the silver physical silver market is supply and demand and the paper market down there in new york is nothing but a paper market so they can manipulate that price any way they want to especially if they have to build their reserves but um the physical market is actually free enterprise that's what we're you know that was what the company was founded, the country was founded on. Right, right. But the, yeah, the bars. Like this 10 ounce down here. It, yeah, typically it costs less per ounce for a company to make a 10 ounce bar than it does for them to make a one ounce bar. Makes sense. And that used to be reflected in the price we had to pay for them. It's totally different now. My wholesaler may have to make 10 calls to find some. He may have to make 50 calls to find them. And they tell him, well, what's the price per ounce? And they tell him the price per ounce. And he orders, I don't care if they're 10 ounce, five ounce, one ounce bars or kilo bars, I'll take 2,000 ounces or 4,000 ounces or, well, I only have 433, I'll take all 433, it, just give me a price. And that's where the market is gone. That is Because of the availability or lack thereof, um, everything is costing roughly the same price. That's why, I price my 10 ounce bars and one ounce bars at the same price per ounce. I mean, from a liquidity standpoint or, or, or barter standpoint, I would probably want the smaller denomination if there was really no difference in the price per ounce. You would think so because as, as the price of silver goes up, you know, the paper price, it goes up, <laughs> um, the ability to buy things with silver will also go up and, um, the smaller item is probably a little easier to use as currency. Now on the trust issue, I've said it many times, but keep in mind, I was on the other side of the counter for a lot longer than I've been on this side of the counter. And the trust was a big issue when I was a buyer, a coin collector specifically. And, um, you know, sometimes I walked out of a coin shop saying, I don't trust this guy. And I just decided when I came in here as a coin dealer that I was going to keep every coin visit I've ever, every coin shop visit I ever made in mind. I remember when my wife passed away, and you know I was working for a big company, and I had to make a change because my kids were very young, mm -hmm. and that's when I came in here so I could make my own hours. But um, for the first seven years, we didn't even make a profit. So, you know, I had, I had to be careful about everything I bought, and I'm assuming that anybody who calls me and asks a lot of questions is, wants to spend their money wisely, and they may not have a lot to invest. Um, I've been there, so I understand that it's, it's a very important decision. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna have patience with everybody. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I appreciate this. Except you, Yankee. Oh, come on. I give you way too much patience. <laughs> okay. I'll be in touch, Mr. Jim, or I'll hear from you. <laughs> okay, thank it's you. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Yankee. Take care. <laughs> Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.